Hello and welcome to Tantrum House Studio Awesome. In this video, we are taking a look at Seas of Havoc by Rock Manor Games. This is an overview video, so keep in mind that we are just showing you the game and how it plays and some of the components. Speaking of components, we have a prototype copy with us today, so some things will change for the final release. And as always, please keep in mind that our overview videos are sponsored in part by our Kickstarter backers and by the makers of this game. Hello, I'm Katie. And I'm Ryan, and we're talking about Seas of Havoc. Seas of Havoc is a one to five player game of high seas treachery. This is a deck building worker placement game that puts each player in the shoes of a sea captain of a pirate or privateer vessel with asymmetric abilities along with unique ships and upgrades. At the start of the game, each player receives a starting deck and then they will add their captain abilities into it. Each deck features movements your ship can make along with possible cannon attacks. The board is set up randomly with islands and sunken treasure and starting ship positions. In the island phase, players can send skiffs to gather resources, claim flags, purchase cards, or build upgrades to your ship. The resources are used to purchase upgrades and add cards to your deck, but be careful not to overspend because you might need those resources in the sea phase as well to steer your ship or make a strategic shot on an enemy boat. In the C phase, each player draws four cards and takes turns playing those cards. Ships will follow the movements available on their maneuver cards to position themselves better on the board. Some movements require additional sails to continue. Cannon fire cards allow captains to shoot at other ships, but they do require cannon balls. If a ship is hit with cannon fire or is rammed by another ship, they will take a damage card and add it to their deck. Damage cards count as negative points at the end of the game. Any one captain that damages another ship will receive infamy points accordingly. At the bottom of purchase cards is a flag ability. If you have claimed the matching flag that round, you can take the extra action that that flag gives. Once claimed, flags always stay with whomever have claimed them until another player takes it in the island phase. Out on the board, there are sunken ships that represent treasure, resources that can be claimed by running over that spot and gaining the valuable rewards. New sunken ships are spawned each round during the island phase. The end of the game is triggered when the last damage card is given. The last C phase will finish out and then players will review their decks counting the points gained from purchased cards and ship upgrades. After all that, the damage cards are subtracted. The captain with the most infamy wins. There are ways to get rid of your unwanted cards or your damage cards that are giving you negative points. Uh, both in the island phase and in the sea phase, you can activate different cards or uh, spaces on the board to let you uh, turn in those things to get rid of them and possibly get some resources back. Yeah. Um, this game has a lot of the take that kind of player on player feel um, because it very much is about um, the boat interactions and um, really shooting each other or ramming each other with the boats. So there is a lot of that take that kind of feel. Yeah, the game doesn't end until enough damage is given. Also, having different ships and captains that aren't connected to each other, you can mix and match a little bit. Mm -hmm. The game rules do give you uh, some suggested matchups for the ships and captains, but you don't have to follow that. You can mix and match them as you want and see what combination best fits your play style. Yeah, and um, I don't think we mentioned this before, but the first player token is something that can change up you can go to a certain space on the island phase and get that first player token, which can give you a strategic advantage because you'll be going first during the C phase. Um, you really can set yourself up with a quick movement to maybe get out of range of somebody, or if you're already right near somebody and you're ready to fire some cannons, then you can 
go for it. There are both solitaire and two-player rules for the game, and in the two-player rules, it shakes it up a little bit because you both control two ships each, but you only have this, the same deck of cards and uh, resources that you did with a higher player count. So you're splitting up those resources between the two ships. You have to think a little bit more strategically in which ship you're going to move when. So that offers a little bit of variation. You'll have to check it out. If this sounds of interest to you, definitely check out Seas of Havoc on Kickstarter. And be sure to stay tuned to our channel for more Kickstarter overviews like this one.